Hattori is the go-to legend for sure. Uh, seeing Java bring this out for game one against Jeff is going to be very exciting. But Jet Bean on the Tai Lung, epic crossover for more decks. As you said, had an amazing run in Springs. Yeah, one um, of the most exciting things we got to see. And that, that ended up cultivating into the finals where we saw Jiro come out from Luna. So That's that, right. Yeah, that was an interesting Springs overall yeah, it, for Je everyone. Jet Bean really put everybody in a position where they're like, okay, I got to bring out this pocket pick that's like, I never thought I'd need to use this, but that's the answer for the way that you're playing. And and that was the kind of uh, play style that Jet Bean brought out. And it was such a crazy story because he he literally, it was such an absurdly high placement mm -hmm. for his history that he didn't even really get the points necessary to get into MSI. He because just he missed it. He got PR yeah. 17. One off from sneaking in, but he's going to have one less stock to play around with too. Java was doing a really good job of counter poking. Anytime you saw Jeffy look for some reads after going for a couple strings with the scythe, he was answering with a nair right out. He got the neutralized multiple times, like we're seeing right now to, uh, too. It, the the counter poke game has been really solid to back Jeffy off. Yeah, and Java now with the spear still dodges right through that ground pound, covers his head with the weapon throw, picks it right back up, and the spear recovery puts even more damage on the jet bean as another nair hits. Down light and a side light comes through, but doesn't lead to the recovery, so Java's still holding on to this first stock and getting more damage as jet bean can't get those ground pounds to connect. Yeah, that's what you can see often too. That weapon's also off from the spear, just that big hitbox, just making sure that people can't challenge you off stage, especially after jet bean just revealed the mm. ground pound a second ago, so you try to use that as a check, but jet bean's Sight is a big reason why we saw that story continue. His reads looking that much like uh, some of the best side players we've ever seen. So you have to be careful with that. As the gauntlet's neutralized, not going to be enough. The weapon toss Ooh. force him to go high. That's a lot of resources gone. And he's going to catch it. with D-Light. Great job forcing him to go that route, Taza. Yeah, the uh, gauntlet neutral light kind of surprised me that I didn't take him down. But the D-Light was great as well. Uh, you had that active input where you can either kick them forward or go for the combo. When your damage is that high, it just makes sense to mm -hmm. kick him off stage, even up those stocks 2-2. Two to two. But Java's fighting right back back now with the sword. D-Light side air hits. Side light gets him off the stage. He tries to go for a jump read there and gets punished as the neutral stick does not connect. And Jet Bean starts getting a lot of hits in with the scythe. Weapon goes down. Oh, can he get anything started here? No. And that's the second time, Ajax, that Java's been putting out these neutral sticks, hoping for these jumps, and Jet Bean just stays grounded. Yeah, that's just like something. You could get away with that with uh, with Scythe, too. Like, you don't really need to jump around a bunch, like you were just saying, with the active inputs to be able to push him off stage. But now getting juggled out by these Nairs, kind of struggling a bit. I like the weapon toss down. So many resources were gone mm. that you might trip him up with the weapon toss down. The Dare's going to come through on the gauntlets and starting to get some damage. And speaking of big plays, oh, so starting to see some right now. Go for the GC D light, and he's getting more chases now, Job, uh, with uh, with the Gauntlings. Yeah, Nutrisa comes through. Okay, Gravity Cancel down Sig right afterwards. Tosses him right off the right side of the stage. Uh, and I like that, too, because he used the Neutral Sig from the Scythe to get into the air. Mm -hmm. And when it missed, instead of landing, he just gravity cancel to get that down. So it caught Java off guard, but Java gets him right back, and it's a dead even this game is one. Extremely close for the first game of the day. And this is one of them we could definitely expect to see like this, too. Because, yeah. like you were saying before, Duke having Java and his picks for good reason. And the sword definitely playing out exactly how we still expect from Java. But with the spear, the spear's been looking incredible, too. But these are two high caliber picks that you could have guessed to get to top three. And they are showcasing exactly right, right now. Jet Bean goes for the full chase, just missing out. Finally on the dodge in the air. And uh, he's got a small, small life lead out of that. Yeah, it's going to be up to if Java can keep Jet Bean off of this weapon here. He goes for that side light. The D-Light does not catch him on the dodge through. Mm -hmm. The neutral light catches him on the ground. And he's getting a lot of these landings now. And I like the adaptation from Java. Java's like, okay, uh, you're not jumping at all. I'm just going to keep hitting you with these neutral lights. And he's catching them on the ground, on the landings. That's three neutral lights in a row now that we've seen hit. But that time, Jet Bean jumps right over the weapon throw, punches him in the face, and slides off the side of the stage to get caught by a D-Light -like grab pound. A okay, double could come touch. out. That was so close to get the corner on that wall touch right there. Go for the chase on the recovery. Not going to be enough in range. And now Java's going to go ahead and get a free punish off of that on the side here. Jet Bean trying to sneak out one on the way back up. The deer comes through. Weapon toss down. That should be it. That's going to be game one going to Java. Wow, that was uh, insanely close and only decided by the edge guard scenario here. They're, they're, we were not going to get in the replay, but we'll talk about these right here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is uh, the moment where Java gets that side sig, and at the very end here, Jet Bean coming back up, uh, down air hits, and the weapon throw to catch that recovery. Jet Bean wasn't even able to dodge yet because he chose to do that wake-up recovery. But on the left side of the stage, too, when Jet Bean slid off, and went for that jump back to the stage. He got caught with the D-Light ground pound. And it was kind of like that entire moment, even though we went from left to right side, 
Jet Beam was trying to get back to the stage, and Java just didn't yep. let it happen. Incredibly even game, too. 6, 10 to 5, 7 to 1 is not that far off, but something that is kind of eye-popping to me is that fact that it's 6 and 7, both at 30% accuracy for those signatures. So they're both playing the graph, very, yeah. very simple. I mean, yeah, right there. Like the, it, it's, it's interesting. as close as you can get. We, 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 we see, like, the shift where they're taking turns, uh -huh. and then at the end, they're just literally... <laughs> it it could have got closer to that, to that last hit where we see that line cross over. And this uh, is uh, on JetBeam's adjustments lately, too, because looking at the history between these two, 3-0 uh -huh. in favor of Java over JetBeam historically. But like you were saying before, last time out with Springs, it was such a different changeup yes. compared to his previous history where it's like 13th at Steel Series, tw uh, 33rd at Omen Oasis, and it just Three, keeps going. Two, you never really see one, that break in the top eight until that last one. It seems like it's just figured something out recently. Yeah, it... it it was such a sudden placement from Jet Bean, and his history was so stark in terms of the contrast. Mm -hmm. that it's, I, it's why I, I, I forgive anybody giving predictions to not really be like, okay, maybe that was a, a one-off. It, it was kind of the case with the, in EU uh, where we had the crew battle tournament and Solar Sin kind of popped off, and we were like, well, this is the first time you ever popped off. Maybe it's just crew battles, and then he just remained a staple in mm -hmm. EU ever since. So let's see how this plays out here as Jet Bean is down, but it was last hit. Yeah. So now from that game one uh, and this is a similar lead as we saw last game but Jet Bean was able to even things up pretty quickly and from then on out we had ourselves a back and forth game so let's see what Java can do is we're back to Apocalypse yeah this is the brand new home of Brawlhalla ones right now the Apocalypse just everybody going here not uh, this uh not too much room to run away. Plenty of combo capabilities between both of these weapons, particularly the Scythe. But for Java, I'm really impressed so far by the way that the Hattori has played out. We had question marks on question marks wondering what the both of our players were going to do. And as we see him not get knocked out right there, but going to get set back off stage. This might be an opportunity for Jet Bean, but I like the fact that he realized he was out of position. Not worth going for the ground pound right there, because if Java read that, that could have been a reversal on his side as well. Yeah, uh, there's a bit there's a bit of a surprise in my mind that it's like, well, I thought Val was the obvious choice for people that like Sword because of Gauntlets and everything else. So the Atari is a little bit uh, different, but I am enjoying what I'm seeing. He needed uh, a two-handed weapon. That's what it was. Ah, <laughs> that's right. Instead of just two hands, yeah, that are weapons. Yeah, not two separate hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> he's going to need two hands to pull him back up onto the stage after getting caught by the ground pound off stage right there. But j we, we were talking about it just last match. Uh -huh. These leads do not last very long so right. far from that for as what we saw for the first game. Oh, let's see. Okay, that's a great start. Like, oh, that's already, like, four hits. That's more than enough for Jet Bean. Like, that side stick hits, a little bit of a carbon copy from how Java was able to even things up in the previous mm -hmm. game. But the four hits coming out from Jet Bean, as you said, uh, is, is a bigger lead than either of them ever got when stocks were exchanged here. And he's continuing to push forward with those nares, although Java returns with three yeah, unanswered that was nares. Really good on the side of Java. Like, oh, oh, here we go. Oh, it's not going to be enough off the side stick on the side, but this snatches him out of the air with the GCD light. Are you going to be able to make it back through this? He does. He gets the last hit swing on the Sarah to come back, and I'm very surprised he yeah. got through. Yeah, that, that was a great Sarah, very risky Sarah, but choosing to put that out there, because so, Jet Beam was hoping that he would touch the stage, but that gravity canceled D-Light, caught him on the left side, that time catches him on the right, and knocks out. This is a solid lead coming out from Jet Beam, all off the back of the Scythe that's been comboing Java while he was unarmed, while he's back on the stage, all of the weapons that Java's been using, it's really been off the back of the Scythe, and he continues as that down air connects, and he tries to get that pivot neutral, and once again, I mean, Java's trying to get those neutral sticks to work, Ajax, but he Jeffy's now not just avoiding them, but doing a ton of damage after yeah. he whiffs them. This is uh, something that normally, I mean, Bodvar can kind of get away with the fear of doing that sometimes where you just throw it out a bunch, but with mm -hmm. Hattori, like, you have the range, but it's also very likely you're going to get whiff punished for it by comparison. Yeah. So Java's got to be careful. That time, Ooh. though, look, he believed hard enough. He said, look, y'all. It's look, a we, different. It, like, it, it, it worked eventually, so now he looks like a genius, even though for, for that whiff. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's the first spear neutral zig that he ever did, mm. and it was a really good adaptation of Jet Bean hovering him in the air, hovering over him in the air there. Uh, and maybe Jet Bean had that sense of comfort because he saw that Java didn't have the sword, uh, because right now, once the sword's in his hand, Jet Bean's literally beneath him, right? Like, he's just like, I'm not we're going to get anywhere close to that. And we haven't seen the side six or down six from Java on the Hattori. And now with that recovery coming through, one more of those could bring it to an even set. Nair, nothing can follow up off of that bounce, but Jet Bean's real close. Yeah, he's got, like you said, one more recovery. He'll First do it. He just needs game. to get one hit. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. No. You, knew, you knew he was hovering. He was doing the stutter <laughs> step, and he just waited for it. But now he's going to get the wall touch at the end. Go for the aggressive Nair on the way back up, too, just like for Jet Bean. He knows. He's constantly been swinging in those spots. And he's going to commit to the gauntlets, because at this point, any straight hit, especially 
to neutralize if they catch him on the ledge. That's going to be the stock. Ooh, good dodge, but that grandpa doesn't hit. Luckily, the Sare bounces you off the stage if you get hit in center. So Java's still surviving on this stock, but man, there's a lot. Honestly, I mean, actually, he can do it. The, the, the Scythe is kind of the best weapon to be this damaged against. Like you, what, do you, what do you have? You have Downlight and Sare. I'm pretty sure that's it. And then your signature attacks, which is why we saw, okay, Side Light's pretty good too. Uh, not not what I usually think of. He was deep enough in the red. For, for like, knocking okay. people out. <laughs> but, uh, man, I believed just as hard as Java did that that was going to be the first NSYNC to hit, and it didn't. Now, um, it was it was framed off, too. <laughs> like, that, it was very, very close for, for Java to take it. We can see it right here. Oh, okay, oh. never mind. No, we're not. But <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> if you uh, believe hard enough, you'll remember that that was that close. But a well-deserved jet bean uh, highlight reel there with all those stocks coming through as 678 damage was dealt. And, I mean, Java... He's in the defense stance. Mm -hmm. Hattori still only can have up to five defense, right? That's an amazing survivability coming up from there. I mean, we're seeing graphs here that we would normally only expect to see from eight defense legends and doubles, but that is just how great Jabba's doing at surviving against Jet Bean. But Jet Bean's sticking to his guns and uh, doing really well here uh, in this set as we're going on to game number three. And I mean, 449 damage to the Scythe. That's not... That's not a weapon that you do that much damage on, AJ. No, no, you just you, you you snatch people out of the skies, you get really quick strings, and you steal stocks. But mm -hmm. Jet Bean, a lot of that damage came from the fact that Java was almost impossible to get the knockout on. Like, he just yeah. kept avoiding getting knocked out, and his reversals off of the nares and the skies were so good. But now switching it up to Spirit Realm, you have a few different landing options, at least here. Right, right. Switching away from Apocalypse. Yeah, there's not too many stages uh, that provide these platforms that hang over the edge anymore, with Mammoth now being shrunken down to Apocalypse and that platform not descending quite as far. Uh, we get more opportunities for Java to take advantage of edge guard scenarios like that with the mm -hmm. double delight on the spear. And if you're good enough with it, you can get the platform cancel. You don't have to waste a dodge. You have that many more options after you get that win. Uh, against your opponent with this weapon. So we'll have to see if that continues here uh, as the game once again, incredibly even at the start, and Jet Bean pummels him off the side of the stage, but we're seeing, I was going to say, a lot less ground pounds because Java's <laughs> been doing such a great job with the weapon throws and recoveries yep. that he's been punishing him, but Jet Bean goes for that again and gets the first strike here uh, in game number three. I, that's that's a testament of a good player, too. When somebody's trying to condition you out of going for that play, and Java was able to do that for, like, a whole two games, mm -hmm. and then Jet Bean decided, now it's time to pull the trigger, and he's able to go ahead and get that gauntlet recovery afterwards. Side air is just going to take it straight up in that position. Taza, I feel I feel like we're watching a winner's final set already, yeah. and it's only the beginning of top 32. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite close, and, and both players are adapting to each other in such a way where it's it, it's getting hard to uh, really call wh which direction it's going to be going into because mm -hmm. the, the state it, it's one of those awesome matches. And I love these counter pick matches. Um, where the legends are absolutely staying the same, but the stage that they're fighting on is what's deciding the pace of the battle. Yeah, and I, it's, uh, it's just, since it's new every single time, I, I, I have a little bit of an idea what to expect. Java seems to be playing around these platforms a lot better than Jet Bean does, but Jet Bean's still taking the stocks first. Yeah, I'm glad that this first set, after I was just talking about how Meg D has one of the best neutrals in the game, and I feel yeah. like I'm watching like a double up on that right now. Their defense has been so good. There's been very minimal overextensions. Usually when they go for a hit, it's off of a whiff punish. I mean, you, a big reason why I think this game is going a little bit slower compared to before. We have seen significantly less SIGs come out of Java by comparison to like last game where they had 10% yep. that connected. And then look at that. When Jet Bean goes for a signature of his own, uh, Java dodges right past against the punish. Oh, but the downlight miss spaces that, and Jet Bean takes him off the right side of the stage. Ooh. But Java with the reversal, Sare there uh, goes for the ground pound. Jet Bean did not touch. He went for the dive kick, and he manages to avoid the stage completely, and Java just goes, okay, my, my role has shifted to don't let him near me so mm -hmm. that he doesn't get a chase dodge, and Java takes the lead. That was just really good positional awareness on the side uh, by Java right there, and uh, able to avoid so much. Trying to go for a three piece with the Nair follow up that could end up costing him this stock. Forced to go high, weapon toss up, goes for the dare, tries to box his way out. Does get the wall touch at the end, but that was purely because of the fact that Jet Bean already used the weapon, couldn't really push any further. Weapon throw is covering his head there, and Jet Bean's just like, ah, I'm okay. I did my one ground pound. So he gets the recovery <laughs> instead. He's like, this is a much safer way to knock you off the stage. Uh, and Jet Bean uh, evens up the game again. It's game three. We've been in this one stock to one, no damage scenario so many times now. And with the neutralites coming through, Jet Bean is making all that damage happen on the scythe mm -hmm. once more. And it is great. Java can't get that landing down. Gets caught with the nair, gets sent to the left side of the stage once again. Uh, 
But yeah, that's why that damage number on site surprised me so much, because it felt like, oh, the first two <gasps> hits. He went for the double neutral sig. I, 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 I love the attempt. Like, at this point, especially in game three, where you're trying to snag lead up and go, move forward in the set, going for it three now after holding on to it the whole, uh, the whole game, going for the ground pound that could end up costing him, backs off because he doesn't have any good position after the weapon toss. Jabba's constantly been attacking with Nair on the way up in that spot anyway, so you might as well just go get your weapon. Oh, and that neutral sig doesn't hit. Double Ooh. side light. He didn't go for the recovery. He went for the neutral sig instead, and he gets punished for it. Sarah comes through. Side air, unarmed. Does he have the jumps to make it back? He gets pogo, so he does touch. But then the weapon throw hits him off of the recovery. He goes down at the bottom of the stage, and Java barely wins that game three in a set that Ajax, I don't... I don't expect a random two stock to happen here. Mm -hmm. they, 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 these two players are so evenly matched here. Um, and Java making good usage of both of his weapons and his kits, but much to my surprise, Jet Bean seems to be very uh, focused on using the Scythe in this player mm -hmm. matchup. I think if there was any oh, question marks that we show. had continuing into the day for the Satori, uh, they've kind of been checked off. But I, I've just genuinely been very impressed by the way we're seeing Java's play with the Hattori so far. Going for a lot of neutral six, sure, but most of them are like scare tactics. Uh -huh. And uh, he saved them for the very end that time to change it up because he went for so many early on. But his defense against Jet Bean has been very good. As we're seeing the graphs again, Ooh. as Look how close this is overall. It was stock. It wasn't until yeah. stock two where things started to actually shift heavy out. But the very beginning of the game, once again, was just insanely close. Now with the game up lead right now, where do you think we go? Because they switched off into Spirit Realm. Miami Dome. Miami Dome? <laughs> yeah. It just feels like a dome game. I don't have any other reason. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it just I, feels like it. I just. I wish I had some like better analysis for it, but they do seem to be feeling. Uh, like they're just switching from stage to stage as we're countering, picking mm -hmm. things, and every game is getting so close. The vibe for me is that both players are kind of like, after a win or a loss, mm -hmm. it's like, well, I don't want to go back there again because I want to go to a place that I'm going to have an advantage over this person. And they're both just agreeing to try different stages out until eventually someone wins the best of five, right? Yep. Like we have to get to that point at, at some point. The bands are coming in. Jet Bean says no. Yeah, Jet Bean, Jet Bean disagreed with Miami Dome. I would be hard pressed to believe that Demon Island ends up being the pick because you don't really go there for Mordex. Uh, and that's the way we see it banned as I just finished saying that. And I mm. missed out where they decided to go to. I don't think it was Brawl Haven. So no. what was left? Apocalypse? I think Apocalypse. I'm fairly certain it was Apocalypse. Ooh, we're going so, back. And we, we'll be seeing right now. It is, in fact, going to be Apocalypse. They're going to return. And uh, let's okay. see what Jet Bean could do as an answer going into this potentially final game because things were looking very good up close. But like you said, we got the surprise two stock at the end there just from the defensive job. Yeah, we got the cosmetic loadout change here with Jet Bean going from the Tai Lung to the Daimyo, but the kit's exactly the same as they're both mm -hmm. up at crossovers from Mordex. And Java on the right side of the stage, already getting hit up by that scythe. Uh, but uh, I stand corrected from that previous game where Jet Bean actually out damaged his scythe with the gauntlet, showing a very good uh, uh, spread of damage. Both players had over 200 damage on both of the mm -hmm. weapons, so it's really just what they have in hand and how they're able to use it in the matchup currently. Uh, we're I mean, I say normally because this is kind of the case. I oftentimes see players pick a certain weapon to deal with another weapon. But when it comes to these two players, they're just fighting with what they can get their hands on, going for the weapon starve when they can, and then letting the match play itself out. And as Java gets that recovery into Nair, despite being really behind the beginning of this uh, this game, he even things up. And that's Sarah got him out of his recovery. That's it. Wow. Je Jet Bean goes down despite being up orange damage to red in the first minute of the game. You know, if I had to put like a point spread across both players, I would say pretty much everything up till that point has been, you know, like five out of five advantage, five out of five neutral, but five out of five defense for Java, four out of five for Jet Bean. It's a slight favor, just slight favor for Java. Ooh, and it's starting to increase right now. Down down there. Oh my God, well, side he All right, advantage state now, 10 out of five for Java. He has gone for the big play. That could yeah. be the mental destroyer right now that sets Java, uh, Jet Bean back. It is still Mordex, so you can climb back into it off a couple good strings, but you got some work to do now. Gravity cancel, unarmed side light, spiked him into the stage. That's a replay for sure. Let's see how this match plays out. I mean, at this point, this is the greatest lead that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you said, Jet Bean on the Mordex, he's got that explosive comeback potential with the, uh, with the gauntlets or the scythe to be able to combo off the side of the stage. But Java is not letting up as that side light hits, recovery hits as well. Jet Bean reaches into the sky, trying to get the reversal with that Nair, and it's not connecting. Uh, scythe D-Light. 
puts him into that place where he's hoping for a string. Sidelight connects. Damage is coming through, but Java with that downlight. Oh, oh, this, could be, the oh this could be it. This could be it. This could be it. If you get the call right now, there it is. Okay. That actually wasn't that bad damage wise. You see, he's slightly in the orange. He's just got to play good defense to stay away from Java to force a game five. What a devastating uh, punish to whiffing your downlight Sarah on Spear, mm. right? <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like that is why, I mean, everybody misses him at some point, right? But that that is a combo that you want to hit because if you don't, apparently, you get scythe down air edge guarded and then the game is completely even again so java now taking a ton of damage uh had such a huge <gasps> lead and there's a kid to jet beat is he about to take the lead Yo, is he taza. about to take the game <laughs> taza he is he is he is going in now this is the jet bean that we saw oh. from spring championship starting to wake up a little bit right now java gonna be able to sneak in through past that side air though he has stage control and he goes in with the end light he's not gonna be able to connect here comes the weapon toss in java is able to get no openings side out of that hits. jet bean look like he might force the game five Oh man, he's off the side of the stage and dash jump ground pounds on the table there. Wall slip activating so soon. Falling down with that down air avoids one neutral light, but Jet Bean still has advantage. One side light hits and Java doesn't go for the neutral light read. Instead, he gets the side light again. Oh my god. But he gets punched away. Unarmed, okay. <laughs> Unarmed neutral light's coming through, gives him stage control. If he's this is somehow... one recovery way. Oh my god, that was so close. Java <laughs> just sneaks away from it. Java uh, forced on the stage. I mean, he's on the edge of the stage. He has next to the oh, He just... goes for the big play. They cross each other up. Sarah one way, the neutral at the other. He's Spot dodges, he's holding center. <laughs> Weapon throw forward, hits, gets the sword. Please don't neutral sig, Java. Oh, not, you, not you, know, you know he's thinking no, about no, it. You no. know he's thinking it's about too it. too risky. Goes for the straight up recovery, but he just dodges away from Jeppy. Jeppy just needs one recovery. Java just needs a D light Sair. He misses the Sair. He looks for the Nair. He gets the recovery. That's not going to be oh enough. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, one more D light recovery comes through. Java thought that. Okay, that's it. Oh Java my God. <laughs> barely wins a game. That was his to lose, right? Like yeah. that, that, was, yeah. <laughs> that was insanely close. Uh, we're gonna get the highlights here. That was a great side air onto, onto Jet Bean, and this is where I thought it was curtains, right? Because he gets the D-Light ground pound, hits him off the side of the stage, and I think the combo goes into a weapon throw. Okay, neutral sig, finally catches him. He, Jet Bean almost landed too. So that mm -hmm. barely got him on the very edge of the of the neutral signature. Down air weapon throw and gravity cancel side light into the slant off the jump. Look at that, and he spikes straight down, and the dive kick, I mean, didn't hit, but at that point, I think Java was committed to this stock as being traded yeah. with Jet Beans 